Dear friends, welcome and a special welcome to Samai Hamed, Jalil Azad and Shahab Tabibi. Uh, my name is Sophie Zelstra and I'm the chairwoman of PEN Netherlands. On November 21st, 2021, the acting minister of the Taliban's Ministry for Propagation of Virtue and the Prevention of Vice, Mohammed Khalid Hanafi, issued the heavily restrictive media guidelines during a meeting with Afghan journalists and representatives of the few remaining media networks in the country. The guidelines seek to reimpose the Taliban's ultra-conservative views on Sharia across Afghan civil society, severely constraining the space for free expression. Measures in the guidelines include the prohibition of drama series with female actors, the banning of any electronic media that portrays the Prophet Muhammad or other religious figures, and the forbidding of any comedy or satirical program that may cause humiliation or insult. The days are short and it's dark outside, my friends. Yet here we are to pay tribute to the writers, the poets, the essayists, the journalists, and to all those who create new horizons with their words for Afghanistan. Um, the afternoon will look like this. I will soon dedicate the empty chair, as is the habit with pen gatherings. After that, Frauke Santing, who is the moderator of this afternoon and also a board member of Pen Netherlands, interviews Samai Hamed, Jalil Azad, and Shah Tabibi. They will try to answer the following questions. What happens when you are forced to leave a country where everybody understands your stories? Do you have to change the way the ways in which you tell them? Or do you educate others in understanding your stories? And now I will dedicate the empty chair. Worldwide, there are countless writers who may or may not be brutally silenced because their pen is considered subversive. They are threatened, intimidated, forced into exile, arrested or killed. In all cases, prevented from being here today. Next to me is an empty chair. The empty chair is a concept of Pen International and it symbolizes the writer who cannot attend due to imprisonment or is otherwise not free to speak. Today, the empty chair represents not just one individual, but Today, the empty chair represents all women in Afghanistan. All women in Afghanistan who are now denied the ability to participate in gatherings like we have today, and for whom it is impossible to freely express themselves without having to dislocate themselves from their homeland and live in exile. Women's voices must be heard and respected, not censored or dictated. To honor the women in Afghanistan, I'll read some land days. Originating thousands of years ago, land days are usually anonymous and composed of two lines of 22 syllables. Land day are folk poems that can be funny, sexy, raging, or tragic, and have traditionally dealt with love and grief. The word, the word land day means short, poisonous snake, in Pashto. The poems are collective. No single person writes a lende. A woman repeats one, shares one. It is hers and not hers. Although men do recite them, almost all are cast in the voices of women. Lende belong to women, said Safiya Siddiqui, a renowned Pashto poet and former Afghan parliamentarian in Afghanistan, poetry is the women's movement from the inside. One notable example is by warrior war poet Malalai. And she wrote long time ago, Young love, if you do not fall in the battle of Maywand, by God, someone is saving you as a token of shame. Malalai, an Afghan heroine who famously fought during the Second Anglo-Afghan War, 
called out this land day during the 1880 Battle of Maywand. Locals believe that Malala's land day motivated the fighters to ultimately defeat the British invaders. Land day often rail against the bondage of forced marriage with wry and atomical humor. An aging, ineffectual husband is frequently described as a little horror. Uh, the following Lende is from Gulmakai, a 22-year-old woman in Helmand province. And she wrote, Making love to an old man is like making love to a limp cornstalk blackened by fungus. I know this is true, she announced. My father married me to an old man when I was 15. She said she made up poems all the time as she cooked and cleaned the house. But Afghan women have also taken on war, exile, and Afghan independence in poetry. In poetry. I'll read you some. The first one, I call your stone. One day you look and find I'm gone. And another one, May God destroy the Taliban and end their wars. They've made Afghan women into widows and whores. And another one. When sisters sit together, they always praise their brothers. When brothers sit together, they sell their sisters to others. And yesterday evening, we had dinner with Samai Hamed, and he recited another Lande which goes as follows. When my lover is laughing, it seems like somebody is weaving a velvet cloth. And then there's another beautiful one, and that's written by Mina Muska. Mina means love in Pashtu language, and Muska means smile. And she lost her fiancé last year when a landmine exploded. According to Pashtun tradition, she must marry one of his brothers, which she doesn't want to do. She doesn't dare protest directly, but reciting poetry allows her to speak out against her lot. And she has written, my pains grow as my life dwindles. I will die with a heart full of hope. And then finally, a really beautiful Lende by Lima Niasi. She is a 15-year-old Pashtun woman, and she lives in Kabul, and she addressed her latest poem to the Taliban. You won't allow me to go to school. I won't become a doctor. Remember this. One day, you will be sick. And that was my tribute to the women of Afghanistan. Now, um, Frau Kiesanting will uh, conduct the interviews. Uh, good luck to you. Yeah, I would like you, Jalil Azad, to come and join me on the stage. And um, you're here for me. I'd like you, Jalil, to come to the stage, and you're here already. Um, we do it first. We before we talk to you, go to you, we'd like to show you the introduction clip of the Truth Booth project. That America will complete its mission in Afghanistan and achieve our objective. <laughs> Jalil, you uh, are one of the producers of um, this project. 
Uh, you worked for different Afghan television stations in the last 15 years, mainly as a producer and a manager, I understood. And you, um, since the 23rd of August, you're in Holland. Holland. Yeah. But yeah. before we go to that, let's go back to this project, this beautiful mm -hmm. project from 2013. Mm -hmm. What was your drive? Why did you like to work on this project? You were asked by Antoinette de Jong, a journalist from Holland. Um, mm. Did you say immediately yes? Uh, first of all, uh, please let me uh, thank you and Pain Netherlands to invite me for the, this beautiful uh, afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, uh, it was very, uh, you know, uh, I never can forget that time, which I uh, just joined it with the Truth Boot project. Uh, it was about uh, five months and after I joined it to One TV, and uh, then uh, I hear it from the, uh, my colleagues and uh, do you have to work with the Truth Boot project? Just I, I, I uh, started to search and, uh, uh, about the Truth Boot project. I couldn't find anything. And then uh, we just saw the colleagues from the uh, uh, Antonita. Antonit, and then uh, two American uh, artists there, uh, and they gave me some information about uh, this project, and then we start to work in the Kabul. Yeah, really, it was very uh, special for me because I never had uh, any experience about this kind of the project, and uh, just I saw that the boot uh, they are uh, they tried to uh, check it in the yard of the Van TV, and just I I I I, I thought what kind of the show or what kind of the project should be the, uh, be it uh, maybe it the, the boot is for the background not for uh, for uh, for uh, anything else the people will stay here in front of the boot for the interview uh, but was but it was it strange to you that they were actually asking ordinary afghan people to speak out was that new yeah it was uh, for the uh, for the first day which i just got to information about uh, uh, to to inform myself about the project because it it was new for me also uh, then after uh, some days we start to work uh, on that project and went to the different area to uh, ask people ordinary people to come here to come uh, to join us to uh, uh, talk about the the truth uh, which they think is uh, but uh, the people also uh, was interested how what kind of the 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 the, the boot is this they didn't know about that uh, they, they, they didn't have any information about that boot uh, and just we informed them do you have you need to come here and go inside of the the boot and talk whatever you want whatever is in your heart uh, and, and no one uh, no one will, uh, will uh, prevent you to t uh, to say these things or don't say uh, don't say this uh, these issues and you can easily talk about whatever you want. Yeah, uh, I think we can we can we can go to this second clip and it will be a little bit clearer. Yeah, and sure. the sentences they were asked to say the truth is, and then they could finish the yeah. sentences. Yes, yeah? exactly. let's let's uh, have a look at another example. Yeah, sure. Uh, کس شرکت روشن کسک بسیار پول میخوره دیگه دیگه کسک سلف یازده استم نام من خالد یازده سال استم نام من خالد است سلف چار ولد محاضی و دین من گپ میزنم به از طرف من گپ میزنم از طرف ایچی من گپ میزنم از طرف تلویزیون یک تلفن ها که از بسیار ارزان می آید قمت می فرشن یا که از بسیار چی پیش رفت چین که مالای مالای چینوی رو نخرین که و که از چیست قمت رو میگن ارزان رو می آرن و تیزی که خراب می شن چی یا گپ دیگه دوستا دست های تو نبخونین دیگه که یا گپ آخوریم از دوستا در سایتو نبخورن قرآن شریف تو نبخورن هر وقت که چی مادر تو نوزار نتن پدر تو نوزار نتن دیگه با امان خدا دوستا چی میخواین که گپ بزنیم بیاین در باقا بابور شرکت چی تلزون یک 
با من خدا نه من خارد بود حقیقت این است که ما در روز بر روز شنبه ما امتحان داریم ولی ما خودم یکی از روزها کمی باشه دوست خانه یکی از دوستایم رفتم ولی او برام یک چند ناهنگای بسیار نو داد جدیده و ما نتونستیم که درس بخونم به خاطر که زمانی که ما کامپیوتر خود چالان کردم به خاطر درس ها و از درس موندم و خواندن ها رو و از درس موندم I can see from your smiling face that it brings memories back. Were you surprised that there was very often a queue because the, the True Boots project uh, was at three locations in Kabul, I think. Then it went to Herat, it went to Mashar al-Sharif and to Bamiyan, Bamiyan at the end, at a, at a, at a spot where this uh, magnificent um, Buddha statues were destroyed in 2001 by the Taliban, eh? that spot you choose. Um, were you surprised that so many people were eager, they were queuing to speak out? Uh, yes, when we start to explain the people, uh, they just inter uh, to be interested to talk with, with, with us in the, in the booth. And then they, after they, they talked uh, in the booth, uh, then uh, they called to another friend or another family member to come here and talk about whatever you want. It was very interesting for the people and I just be shocked at uh, why the people is interesting to talk uh, with this project. Because actually when you are a journalist in Afghanistan and you take a camera and going outside for the interview with the people, a lot of people are afraid uh, to talk about with the, uh, with the uh, journalist or, or in front of the camera, especially uh, women uh, in Afghanistan. But uh, that, that project was very, 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 uh, you know, special. Uh, because they, they didn't afraid about anything. They, they just feel uh, themselves alone in the booth and start to talk whatever they want and uh, just make themselves uh, relax and easy because after talking, after you have um, everything you heard and then you explain to someone, you, you feel relaxed. And th these people also uh, felt uh, re uh, relaxed themselves after talking in the, in the booth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see another clip, the clip uh, three, uh, with the elderly man and uh, the young women. I mean, I'm a Afghan, 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 به مقام های بالا رسیدن ما نیست کسی به فکر پیشرفت کشور نیست همه میخوان که ما همینطور عقب مونده بمونیم کسی نمیخواد که ما پیشرفت کنیم کسی به فکر ما نیست کسی برای ما تلاش نمیکنه کسی نمیخواد که ما در جهان مطرح بشیم فقط مشکل اونها اینه که مقام به دست بیارن چاکی به دست بیارن روی چاکی خود بشینن و تنها پول به دست بیارن نمیخوان که روی چاکی بشینن تا مشکلی هر کنن برای امنیت ما کسی فکر نمیکنه برای آینده بچه های این کشور کسی فکر نمی کنه کسی به فکر طفل های این کشور نیست هر سال طفل های زیادی می بینن بر اثر بیماری های زیاد بر اثر ناامنی اختطاف دزدی غارت ولی کسی نمیخواد برای این چیزها فکر کنه به نام پروردگار آزادگان راستین یا مددگار جویندگان عقبین حقیقت خوب اینه که در کشور که سی ده جنگ باشه و زور و تفنگ, تفنگ سالاری باشه می فهمم که قدرت های محدود یا انگشتمار در در صدر قرار می گیرم که بعدا تمام نظام در دست از اینا های و در همچو کشور گفتن حقیقت برای انسان ها می فهمم که گران تمام بشه چون که در هیچ همچو کشور ها زور که حق تعیین میکنه حقوق حق تعیین نمیکنه و گفتن حقیقت برای کسانی که حقوقی دارن نظر واقعا گران تمام میشه چون خود شما میبینیم امروز ما با عنوان مؤسسه ما حقیقت بیان کنم باید در پشت کمره ها و در جای بسته که کسی حتی نفهمه که ما کجا گپ میزنیم it's, uh, it still looks like we are talking about present afghanistan eh? we are back now a little bit uh, to a country where these people cannot speak out eh? majority of the people cannot speak out
Uh, yes, as I mentioned, you uh, uh, the, the, the people cannot uh, couldn't talk easily in front of the camera. They uh, say about the uh, uh, the truth which they think about, and never no one uh, nobody want to listen from the ordinary people. And uh, one of the, the, the main point of the Truth Boot project was that they hear from the ordinary people and just share the ordinary, ordinary people's idea to other world and or, uh, the politicians and everywhere. Uh, but in this project, we just experienced this and we uh, hear it about a lot of things, maybe maybe small things, but uh, very, very important for the ordinary people. You know, as you saw the, 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 that uh, Khalid, the child talking about the Chinese full, uh, phone Cell and phones, products, yes, yeah. yeah. And also uh, 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 talked about education, uh, talks about the, uh, his parents. You know, uh, for small people, there is a lot of big issues that uh, never the politicians want to talk about them. And also this stage was very good for the, uh, for the ordinary people to, uh, to, to mention uh, uh, their, their opinion. As you saw the, 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 that female, yeah. the, the girl, how interested uh, she talked. Uh, you know, that, uh, that was the, the truth for, the, uh, for almost for all the people in Afghanistan. No one take care about the future of the children. So no one just uh, thinking about the future of the uh, Afghan people. And uh, you know that that girl was very emotional. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, the, the people always was sad that no one can hear their voice. Yeah. 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 The voices are heard in this project, and we would be very happy uh, that through you um, we could um, look at it. Because to be honest, I never heard of the True Boost project before. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you. Yep. Um, but you are also now one of the people who had to leave. Um, uh, because one of the reasons is this True Boost project. You worked with uh, Western media. Mm -hmm. um, you were here since the 23rd of August. Um, you were in Humansort at the yeah. time being, the Asylum Seekers Center. So, are you? how can your story now, you are here, I think your future for the time being is going to be here. Um, can you tell your stories? Because you have particular stories now too. It's uh, not only the story in, of Afghans in Afghanistan, but it's also the stories of Afghans who had to leave. The modern Afghanistan it was forced to leave and now is here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm one of the uh, lucky person who worked in the media for a long time to uh, come into Europe, uh, especially in the Netherlands. Uh, but still, there is a lot of people there in Afghanistan that they, they just uh, uh, say me, ah, Jalil, you are lucky. Yeah, here uh, still we are looking for the better future in the Netherlands. Of course, the situation to living in the in the in the camps is not fair for the anybody. In uh, it doesn't matter who you are from the Afghanistan or any other countries. Uh, living on the uh, camps is not fair, but. Uh, still, we are we have time to think about the future, uh, to uh, plan for the future, to find some way to go through uh, it, uh, to get better future in the uh, in the here in the Netherlands. Of course, I really like to stay here, and I, this this was my decision from the the day which I, I start to coming to the Netherlands and uh, till now and in the future, of course. I will stay here. I will. Uh, I, I, I like to uh, live with the uh, Holland people to learn a lot, so to be a little bit professional, maybe uh, to uh, to work in the uh, media industry. Uh, and uh, but let's say let's see what happened in the f future. But still, it is my 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 wish. Uh, it is my uh, my target also uh, to do same uh, I did in the Afghanistan here in the Holland. Okay, thank you very much. We wish you a lot of success with your future and we hope you can be, find one day a job as a producer in one of the television stations in Holland. Uh, thank you for talking to you um, and uh, all the best. Thank you very much for inviting. Thank you, thank you. One moment. I would like to ask uh, 
Samaya Ahmed uh, to come to us. He's the president of uh, Pan Afghanistan. Um, I've always problems with the, you, how you do your names because you said I'm Samai Hamed and it's only my uh, first name. So what is your first name, Samai or Hamed? Okay. Sami Hamed. Okay, okay. My, no, no, it's on, it's on. So you, you Thank are. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for invitation. Thanks to uh, Penn Netherland. I don't have, uh, you know, second name. It's my name, Sameh Hamed. Sameh Hamed. Yeah, it's so my you, name. You're the president of Pan Afghanistan. You worked in the media, and uh, you're an international awarded writer and poet. Um, and I think I am not mistaken if I say that you're one of the iconic faces of modern uh, Afghanistan that had to leave, but. Can, we, can you bring us, because you left, I think, in the middle of September, about one month after the takeover of the Taliban. I mean, this brutal uh, takeover. Uh, can you bring us back in that weeks? Um, how, was, how was it to be in Kabul? I think you were in hiding. And in the meantime, you were trying to evacuate as much people as possible. So bring us a little bit back to that time. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I should say that uh, even before the Taliban, our uh, lives were at risk because uh, because of uh, you know secular writing. At the same time, uh, we had uh, you know faced uh, targeted killings. Yeah, before the collapse of Kabul, even uh, one year before the collapse of Kabul. But as long as we could be active and effective, uh, I stayed and uh, other writers and artists stayed inside Afghanistan. Yeah? So therefore, uh, uh, most of the writers and artists of Afghanistan, they had not uh, uh, left Afghanistan yeah? because their lives were in danger it was because they couldn't be active more. Their lives had been in danger before, before the collapse of the Taliban. Some of our colleagues had been be killed, killed before, yeah? You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, therefore, I stayed there. We know that uh, this situation will happen. Not like this dramatic collapse of Kabul, but uh, we had been prepared, yeah? Uh, my wife came from Denmark. I had a uh, Danish travel document. I could uh, fly easily. But, yeah, because uh, you got this document because you have been forced yeah, to leave Denmark. the country oh. 20 years ago and yeah, Denmark gave you yeah. a permanent and, uh, status. Yeah, I returned to Afghanistan in uh, 2003. Uh, then my wife uh, came and said that uh, we should come out. And I said, no, I'll stay inside Afghanistan as well as. Uh, as far as I can be effective and active. So I stayed there, and many other writers stayed there. Our team stayed there, yeah. So, yeah. Tell us about your team, because the, the Pan Afghanistan had since 2004 a writer's house, yeah. and it became a very busy uh, place yeah. for uh, people for lessons, creative writing, for critical thinking. You had a lot of debate evenings. So um, if, if I think about Afghanistan, I never thought about a writer's house in Kabul. What was it? What did you do there? Okay, okay. Yeah, in 2003, uh, Ijen Sholgen and Elizabeth Ede from Penn, uh, Norway, came to Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, we considered them as uh, parents of uh, Pin Afghanistan, and they contacted me, and we together invited other writers, and we established uh, Pin Afghanistan. And at the end of 2003, then in 2004, uh, with support of uh, Pin Norway, we have uh, established the writers' house in Afghanistan, which uh, we call in our language Anjuman Kalame Afghanistan. Uh, so, Anjuman Kalam Afghanistan, it, it is, it is a, you know, the translation of Pin Afghanistan. Then... Uh, Kalam is Pan in Kalam, language, Kalam is pen, yeah. It's yeah. a Pan, Kalam is pen 
yeah. pencil. Yeah, yeah. pen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, this uh, writer's house or Anjumana Kalam Afghanistan had uh, four boards, four boards, Persian language board, Pashto language board, Turkish languages board, we have uh, Uzbeki and other, Turkmenian. Other. Then uh, the fourth board was uh, a minor, minority languages board. So each board had their own, they, they had designed their own programs, their uh, publications. For the first time in Afghanistan, we have published uh, uh, minority languages books, especially literary books. It was for the first time in Afghanistan. Then uh, each board had uh, uh, made their own uh, programs, but uh, uh, at least one day per week since years, uh, especially on in Thursdays, all of them had uh, joined events together. Okay, so you united oh, yes. this Afghanistan that yeah. the politicians couldn't do. Yeah, uh, we tried to, you know, unite. Uh, to reach unity through diversity. It is, it's very difficult, but we had to face lots of challenges, but we tried, you know. We wanted to pave the road, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's for like that. And then uh, Afghanistan Writers House or Anjumana Kalama Afghanistan or Pen Afghanistan had worked uh, to promote uh, literature, to create a space, a space for intellectual uh, interaction and uh, to promote and protect freedom of expression in Afghanistan. That has must must have been an, an, a new but also a very, I wouldn't say maybe dangerous concept. It's a critical. You 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 created a critical mass. Yeah, uh, you know, as a writer, especially in the field of literature, it is always dangerous. Always. Because, because uh, uh, you are trying to break taboos, yeah? You are uh, trying to uh, deviate from the norms. So it, it had always been dangerous, but uh, it was not new in Afghanistan, the, the concept of uh, freedom of speech, but, but um, to start, you know, some, uh, uh, to make it, 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 it is, uh, as a discourse, it was started after 2002, I think, you know, to m make it as a discourse and to, you know, uh, 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 go deeper to understand freedom of ex expression and to have, you know, the uh, facts which uh, uh, creates the ecosystem for f uh, free sp speech, for example, uh, uh, experts in journalism area, you know, uh, to, uh, to understand, the, to, to, to have workshops for students, for the authorities, for the writers, journalists, to open the, the concept. It was, it was uh, 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 a tough task, I think. Yeah. yeah, you. When we talked uh, online, uh, yeah. when you were still in in, in Copenhagen in Denmark, um, you said to me that you believe that um, imagination, fiction, and yeah. in nonfiction, because you use also first um, yeah. always your your imagination, is the kind of motor, the way you can change societies, and that's why you said I like to work with young people, um, but. Uh, can you explain that? Because it looks a little bit in a country where there is so many uh, problems that how you, you could use imagination yeah, as a tool for free democracy. I think, you know, uh, one of the key challenges in Afghanistan is lack of creative thinking in critical thinking. And to combine creative thinking and um, uh, cr cr uh, critical thinking. It is so. For creative thinking, we need imagination. So uh, we should uh, know the creative ways of problem solving. We have talent in Afghanistan. We have resources in Afghanistan. Uh, so uh, lots of issues. 
there are, but we should link creative thinking and critical thinking to solve some of problems in Afghanistan. So therefore, Afghanistan had uh, worked a lot to pave the road for critical thinking through uh, creative thinking, through workshops, especially creative writing workshops, uh, uh, working with kids, with youth, on this kind of issues, yeah? Yeah. yeah. We're going for, a, we do a short intermezzo because we have also one of an, a person from Afghanistan who has left Afghanistan already in, at a very early age. Uh, and he calls himself the Shah of Holland. Um, he is um, a psychologist, but also a theater maker. Please take the States, um, Shah Tabibi. Um, and he said, I am an Afghan by birth. Hey, that's where I came to the world, but I'm a citizen of The Hague in Holland by choice. Please uh, take, your, uh, take the podium. Like most children, I ask the question why very often. Why are we Afghan? Why not Dutch? Why do we live here and not there, where all those stories come from? And the one who would answer was Uncle Rahim. The reason we are not there is because the Afghan people have a struggle, an internal struggle to love one another. But they will get there in time. What are you talking about, uncle? What do you talk about love? The people of Afghanistan, they don't know love. They are killing each other. Isn't that the reason why we are here and not there? Shah, I have to stop you here. Before you go on, you have to ask yourself a very important question. Ask yourself what Afghanistan was. Afghanistan was a four-year-old child, surrounded by footprints of bullies and no parents to take care of her. Today, she's a 40-year-old, wrinkled she has become by dust and gunpowder. Afghanistan doesn't know much more than fights, you would say. Obat Shah, please do not mistake Afghanistan's nature for her behavior. Please do not forget the glory and freedom she once had in her childhood. The body of Afghanistan hasn't only tasted blood and hatred. She didn't only give birth to war-thirsty men and hopeless women. No, there was a time she flourished magnificent poets and great scientists. Senai Ghaznawi, Bu Ali Sina Balhi, and the great Rumi. And not even that long ago, Shah, when I was as old as you are now, one could smell freedom and progression on the perfume that Afghanistan was wearing. Women working in laboratories, teaching in universities, wearing their own fashion and having their hair whichever way they wanted. Men playing music, creating art, being tolerant. For God's sakes, Afghanistan was up front in the line of promising children. But every child would become like her. If they had gone through the things that she has been through, every soul would be taunted 
if it had seen so much suffering and neglection. You, Sha, you were a four-year-old child when you were brought to the Netherlands. You learned the Dutch language and was shaped by the European values. But what is Europe? Europe is merely a child who survived the war, licked away his wounds, and perhaps has forgotten what has been brought in upon him. Europe is a child that was granted the chance to grow physically, intellectually, and emotionally. That is the only thing that makes Europe different from Afghanistan. And you, Shah, you got the luck of Europe, although you could have been Afghanistan. Thank you, Thank you. very much, Sha. Come and join us, and we can um, continue the, the discussion about the story Stories from Afghanistan are not only the stories anymore from Afghanistan itself, but also from Afghanistan in the diaspora. Um, you, um, can you take the microphone? microphone? Uh, you, um, and take them under your, uh, you have a lot of plans um, to, um, to kind of not only to reconnect with a lot of Afghans who had left the country recently, but also to connect them with the people oh. like you who left already 20 years ago, the first wave, let's say, um, despite the fact that a lot of Afghans also left in between these periods. Uh, what are your plans with, uh, as PAN in exile? Because unfortunately, there is now PAN Afghanistan in exile. You operate out of Copenhagen, but you have very ambitious plans um, not to let the diaspora shattered by, and then nothing is heard anymore of all these people who in the last 20 years became writers, poets, yeah. storytellers. Yeah, uh, our f it's not j just uh, my plan, yeah? Our pr plan, uh, Afghan pen plan, our member's plan, is uh, the priorities to uh, save the lives of our members. They are still in Afghanistan or in the neighboring countries. It is the priority. But at the same time, as I said before, because uh, when their lives are saved, we want to do also something to save their work. So plans are, are sounds uh, ambitious. But uh, if we look, uh, you know, closer, it is simple because it is uh, just a su suggestion to be connected, a suggestion to uh, have networking. We have lots of members who had uh, left Afghanistan for years, and then the new ones who had been evacuated recently. We want to uh, connect them. We want to create a space. Uh, they can m mobilize each other, they can motivate, motivate each other. And uh, in the countries they're uh, living in, for example, uh, for, for example uh, yeah. in uh, Netherlands, they can make Afghan Dutch, for example, pen hub, then can be connected with the Dutch uh, writers, Dutch pen. Why uh, we have uh, very good writers, for example, here, Afghan Dutch writers, why they can't be members of uh, Dutch pen? You know, they can be members of Dutch pen. At the same time, they can be connected to each other. Because uh, I think you, you want, you, you would like them to continue writing, yeah, despite the fact 
that they have to leave the country, despite the fact there's a lot of difficulties yeah. to settle in a new country. Yeah, possibly they're writing, because you know it is their own decision, and it, it is. It is uh, but uh, at least to uh, to create a kind of at atmosphere to share their writing. You know. Yeah. It's yeah. very important. Yeah. Do you think that when you are out of, of uh, Afghanistan, you are an example, you, but you grew up in Holland, so you are, um, uh, you have, I think, uh, more than one language, uh, you speak fluently, um, but does your stories change because of the context? Do you think that you tell other stories uh, than a lot of Afghans do? Um, I have to uh, specify the question. Do you mean Afghans in Afghanistan? Yes, Afghans in Afghanistan, but also yeah. you have now a more individual. It's not a collective story, but you have a collective story, but you have an individual story. Does the context that you're out of your country where you're born, out of your country, change the way you tell stories? Um, I, think, I think an individual is always part of the collective um, whenever they speak or tell their stories. So to a sense, I, um, I tell different stories because I, I have had a different upbringing than Afghan people in Afghanistan. But what connects us uh, are the stories that we both heard, are the stories that I heard from my parents, and just like the, the rest of the Af Afghan di diaspora who have heard these stories. Um, um, but but I think that um, the the stories that I tell uh, are from my life experience. This is maybe a bit specific, um, but what I've noticed in the time that I've been telling stories is that um, most people can connect, uh, and not only Afghan Dutch people or only Afghans, uh, but um, Dutch. Um, Dutch people or Dutch Suriname people, or they connect with um, with the stories that I tell, and that's because there there are these universal emotions that we all have in common, um, and I think that's how you make people understand where you come from, and you build the bridge between you, your stories, and theirs. So it wasn't difficult for you to find a way of also reaching out to say the Dutch audience um, there, there is always a challenge if you want to bring a new world uh, if you want to share or introduce a new world um, but this is similar to um, any new concept uh, for for a homogenic society which the Netherlands is not uh, in, in the big cities at least uh, so um, Everything has a challenge when you first start. Diversity has a challenge. But I think that if you reach the universal emotions, it will be far less challenging as people think, far less scary as people might think or portray. Because um, the other person, in my opinion, is not that different uh, from you, uh, even though appearances might give you that illusion. Um, so. Um, for me personally, it was, I don't think it's so difficult to share my stories because people uh, gave the impression to relate, okay. to become emotional when I become emotional, for example. Yeah. I think this is also one of your ideas is uh, that we not only should um, yeah, reorganize the pan experience uh, in the diaspora to bring storytellers uh, together and to connect them also with the country they are now uh, living in. But also one of the other, other um, urgent projects you have is that to save a lot of the literary and cultural heritage of um, Afghanistan that's in danger now. Eh? I mean, you, you are fearing that books will be burned if they're not been rescued and brought to a safe place so that later on people can understand what is the cultural heritage of, of Afghanistan. Uh, mainly, you know, my focus, because the culture of uh, uh, cultural heritage of Afghanistan will be saved by, by our people. Because Taliban are not changed, but our people are changed and they are protect, protecting. 
uh, you see that the uh, guards of Afghanistan are coming to streets to protect uh, their uh, rights. rights, you know. But uh, just uh, even, even if we have a kind of peace, then the issue is that uh, uh, especially secular writing in Afghanistan, it is in danger. Yeah. Uh, what, are, what do you mean by secular because, writing? Uh, secular writing, uh, because in Afghanistan, uh, secular writing is considered uh, considered as blasphemy, as blasphemy, uh, because the Taliban had said that they have red lines, three, three red lines. The first red line is that nothing sh should be out of the framework of Sharia. Sharia, yeah. The second one uh, is, is Islam that, law, eh? the Islam yeah, laws. Islamic law, but the, uh, the, the, the Taliban way of, uh, you know. Very, very um, orthodox. Their interpretation. The second uh, red line is that nothing should be against national unity. The same, it is the same because it is the uh, uh, Taliban interpretation of national unity. You can, you can see their cabinet, you can see their authorities, your, their behavior, political beha behavior. It is different, you know. So anything can be, if you write, can be against national unity based off the, their interpretation. So then uh, they are saying that uh, free media should be uh, impartial. But what, what they mean by uh, impartial? They are saying that uh, the free media or writers or artists should not insult the Taliban authorities. They have, you know, explained that. So uh, when I'm talking about secular writing, it is free writing. It's free. I'm not, uh, you know, focusing on secular. It's free writing. Uh, uh, writers in Afghanistan, for example, had written, you know, love poems, which can be considered uh, even love poems, which can That's be blasphemy. especially girls, which can be considered, uh, you know, erotic, for example. Uh, the, uh, which can be considered uh, blasphemy, which can be considered uh, anti-tradition, uh, anti-traditional or anti-religious uh, poems or short stories in this kind of issues. So uh, we should find a way to, uh, to save them. Uh, I think uh, it, it, it needs just, you know, volunteer work. Volunteer work. Volunteer. So, volunteer work, yeah. Well, we should uh, make a. Uh, we don't need a budget for that, yeah. It is just uh, a matter of commitment, a matter of making networks and. Uh, Collect books and, and yeah. keep them for the future yeah. generation. Yeah. Uh, Digital, like uh, yeah. we can turn. Because uh, in recent uh, 15 years, most of them are in the digital version, yeah. but before... Before that, yeah, yeah the last 15 yeah, years we've yeah. digitalized books, we so should, we should find we have them online. to archive. survive them, yeah. yeah. And it should be completely voluntary and uh, uh, based off, you know, commitment. Commitment. Yeah. <laughs> By heart, yeah. Yeah. So I would like to ask you both an, an, an question about you. Do you have red lines yourself in yourself? Are there things that you, you, you can hardly or you can not write about, talk about? Uh, in, is there some censorship inside yourself? Because we're talking about censorship from the outside. Yeah. But what about censorship from the inside? Because you're shaped by traditions, you're yes. shaped by background, you're shaped by culture. Is that, did you came across that? When yes, you start actually to be a I did, maker? Like, yeah, it's, a, it's a very interesting um, topic and it has been um, going through my head uh, quite recently um, because uh, like you said very well, uh, censorship exists in your head as well and I discovered that I have some um, censorship and I don't want to, um, uh, express everything or share everything or write about everything uh, because it's simply too private. And there I, I, I see a difference between 
my head and, for example, possibly a, a Dutch version of me who would be um, even see it as artistically free or, or a liberating act to, to share something very personal or um, shameful on stage. Um, quite recently, I've, I've, I've been working on a new show after the Shah of Holland, which is my first uh, personal show of being Afghan, Dutch, Dutch, Afghan, um, and, and much more. Uh, I've been working on this story, uh, w which is about relationships in the Netherlands, or actually relationships, my personal experience about relationships, um, and, and everything that comes with it, and, and the struggles that I personally had. And, and in the process of making this, which, which cost, it took around eight months, eight to, uh, to 10 months, I discovered that I didn't want to share everything with my audience or with the people. And I think in my head, that's the price you pay as, a, as an artist if you give a piece of yourself on stage. That's what you, that's, that's the price. It's that... What do you mean by the price? It's, uh, it's what sells. Personal stories sell. So it's great if you can, and I encourage people to do that because that's also why I'm on stage doing this besides my, my job. But it's a price that uh, some people uh, can't afford or don't want to to pay. So for example, if I would stand on stage and say that I had issues with my, um, uh, with relationships in general, romantic relationships, then I'm giving away a, a part of my privacy in my head or maybe with a person and people get to see that and I get paid for that. <laughs> but that's what I give. Yeah, yeah. So it, so that's what artists give. They, they give a piece of themselves if they make it personal. Of, uh, luckily, there are several ways to create art. And and to transfer your personal experience into... Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But if you want to keep it autobiographical... I, I, so to answer it short, I, I discovered that I do have censorship, uh, which I wasn't aware of that much before, but now um, uh, I do. So to become a theater maker make, makes you more aware of yourself. Yes, and also of your cultures or, or, or the things that you value, cultural values that you have, because maybe partly it does come from my Afghan background, but then again, you, uh, you create your own uh, culture, personal culture, from the inspirations you get from uh, national cultures. Thank you. Uh, Samai, uh, is there uh, something that you can't write about? Uh, you don't have to to give the secrets no. away, but at least uh, no, yeah, give uh, us an idea about... No. You know, as a writer, as a writer, uh, the only r rule I respect is breaking all kind of rules. As a writer. As a writer. But uh, uh, when I, for example, as speech or talking to people or writing in newspapers, it means that... Um, uh, but my border, my uh, my border for freedom of ex expression, is the border of other rights. Other rights. I don't want to, you know, enter to the border of other uh, uh, rights, you know, because uh, I know that freedom of expression is the key for all other rights, and also the grant, grant yeah. But uh, so I respect. But what are the rights from others, for example, you don't want to cross? Uh, no, uh, and you make it not in literature. Bit? Not in literature. For example, when we uh, want to um, uh, plan something about Afghanistan, to, uh, a solution, it should be based off realities. Mm -hmm. We should, you know, challenge the realities based off realities. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we consider realities, for, and based of that, uh, we uh, design design a, a plan or a solution. But in literature, in art, uh, I believe on absolute freedom of expression, in in art. So uh, therefore, for example, my books, they have not been published by any publisher in Afghanistan, all of them had been published by my own company because they, <laughs> they don't dare. 
because it is it's ab absolute freedom of expression. I don't know any kind of border. But when I write, for example, when I discuss a solution about Afghanistan, it is different. You know? Yeah, it's different. Yeah. yeah. Different. So you you use um, creative writing, literature, fiction in a way to transform yourself, or are you because you are also a poet? Um, is it your own experience that's leading, or is it your imagination um, of, of both of course it's always both but how do you if because we haven't been i think familiar to your work in holland uh, if you want to 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 tell a little bit about what your what your creative work is what what are you writing about your stories your poems uh it is the, the, the different uh my own books that i consider consider as uh, writing of Sami Hamid. It is, as I said, based on uh, absolute freedom of expression. I want to challenge uh, myself, the literariness in my mind. As I said, uh, the only uh, rule is that uh, break every kind of rule, but, but uh, m my uh, poems which is famous inside Afghanistan, yeah? they are different. They are different because uh, in that uh, poems, I want to, uh, I have something to say to the society, yeah? society of Afghanistan. And then I use, uh, you know, techniques of literature to say that. I don't consider them as, uh, you know, as uh, real literature. For example, if I see some of lines, possibly uh, they are from new generation, but possibly they know how by actan atan kaime shabat in watan be ma watan kaime shabat. You know, as me on a day how I must buy the exam. Can you translate? Can you translate it? More as in bun bas buy the exam. It is, for example, how by actan atan kaime shabat. It is sung by Farhad Darya, the, the famous singer. It says that. Uh, we can't, uh, you know, dance, the Atan dance. Atan, Atan is very famous, collective dance. We can't Atan just uh, by one person. So it's like that we can't make uh, uh, the country just with one person. We should come together to make the country. I don't consider that, uh, you know, as a, um, my poem, but something, I have something to say, then I use, you know? I use uh, uh, literary techniques. It's, yeah. it's like that. Yeah. I thank you both very much. I think uh, that we have made a start, as Penn Holland, about getting to know to you. I think we will try to continue this. I wish you a lot of success because I think you're going to travel or still the plan with all these COVID uh, measures, yes. I hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you're going to travel around the world a little bit, eh? Yes, that's the idea. Um, as long as it's possible, I, uh, the plan goes through, but I have to see. Yeah. yeah. And then when you're back, we can see your new show. Uh, yeah, let's, let's plan that. That's an yeah. agreement. It yeah. looks, looks very interesting to me. And then Thank you. we can spot your <laughs> self-censorship. <laughs> yes. We can talk about it then. Thank you. I would also thank you uh, very much, uh, Samai. I come back to thank that. You. I would like to thank uh, Jalil uh, again uh, for your being here. And I would like to thank uh, the Bali who uh, hosted us this afternoon. And not only Verona K. Bas, who is the program maker, but also the technical crew, Rayon Obuber, uh, Roland van Velden Ulden, and Robin Tönissen. And I would like to uh, end this afternoon with um, thanking you, not only for being here, but also for a lot of hopeful message you give us. Not everything is lost in Afghanistan. There is a new educated generation with talent. That's the message you give it. Enough front soldiers in and out of Afghanistan to continue the struggle for democracy. And I would like everybody who was watching us this afternoon for being with us. 
for thank you for tuning in and hope to see you uh, again in one of our pen events very soon.